We're here at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center in the STEM Innovation Lab, where NASA educators, engineers, and scientists explore, create, and share ideas in a collaborative space, both physically and virtually. They then take these cool ideas and share them in unique places like maker spaces, think tanks, across social media, and in institutions and schools, and even museums. I had a chance to sit down with Brian Stevenson, who works at the lab, to better understand the virtual space. Brian, you're a virtual reality specialist. First, what is virtual reality? That's kind of a trick question. It's actually a really hard uh, question to answer unless you've experienced virtual reality. The moment you get in virtual reality, uh, your understanding of what the technology is changes. But probably the best way to describe it is we replace what you're experiencing here with a digital representation of a new world. So if you can imagine, you know, normally a video game or a computer program, you're viewing it on a monitor. But with virtual reality, we put you in that monitor and you are looking at it from that perspective. So everywhere you turn, you're seeing that space. Virtual reality brings a whole new dimension to how you experience things. Um, that's, that's probably the best definition I can give for it. Yeah, and I look forward to experience it. It sounds like a lot of fun. And one of the things, though, that I am wondering is, what kind of applications are you developing in virtual reality for NASA? Well, here at the STEM Innovation Lab, we are focusing a lot on education and bringing NASA's technology, NASA's science, to the public in a very digestible way and in a fun way. You know, it's, it's a lot different if you can be there with a satellite and interact with the satellite rather than just read about it or watch a video about it. So we wanted to create an environment where our users felt like they were actually at NASA with our products. And it becomes a little bit easier to learn about things when you've got that much hands-on experience with it. And, and I guess in that case, it's also good for NASA because everyone's not coming in and actually handling expensive and highly technical and sophisticated instruments. Yeah, it, it, it does open up a lot of new opportunities, uh, especially, you know, we have, the, we have two clean rooms here at NASA and not everybody can come here and visit them. But if we can create a virtual representation that is compelling and, and has a lasting effect, in the way of VR, then we can really get more people to experience Goddard that would not normally have the chance to do so. Does that mean if, if I have a virtual reality set up in my home that, that I would have access to the Goddard clean room and things like that? Yeah, well, today, no, but very, very soon we will be releasing what we create to the public through all of the different virtual reality uh, mechanisms. We are developing primarily on the HTC Vive, but we're also gonna have an Oculus Rift um, version, uh, and we have a few mobile versions as well. Our goal is to have lots of products that, that will be distributed to everybody, and they can use them in their own virtual reality setups. And, and I imagine it's great too, they're probably uses for it in schools and uh, institutions and things like that. How about other places in NASA? How are they going to use uh, this technology? So throughout the center, there's a big push right now from engineers and scientists to actually use virtual reality to enhance their work, whether it be to make it faster or to make um, certain things easier to do. There's a big push for that. Engineers would like to use it to bring upcoming satellites into a clean room and you can actually work with a satellite that, that doesn't exist yet. And you'll also be able to see if parts fit or does the satellite fit where we expect it to be. Wow, that's pretty cool. We had an opportunity to bring Milton Davis, an avionics mechanical lead, into the STEM Innovation Lab to see what it's like to work in the virtual reality space. Wow, oh, I see you have some things on the floor. This is awesome. This, it looks exactly like the MMS clean room. Exactly like it. I even see the, the door we went in through. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Milton, you just came back to reality out of the virtual space. Uh, tell us, what was it like? It was a very awesome experience, and it literally is the first time I've had that experience. I haven't tried anything out with uh, iPhones or with Android phones. It's the absolute first time I've done it. And it was really great to actually see some of the hardware that I worked on on one of these missions here at Goddard. So, so what did you recognize in the space uh, that you were able to work with in the clean room? Well, obviously I recognized the clean room. Count, uh, countless hours and days in the clean room on MMS 
as four separate complex systems were had to be assembled and integrated. I also recognized the Star Tracker. I was the lead for the Star Tracker, and I recognized some of the avionics boxes, such as the command and data handling box, the power system electronics, and the navigator GPS receiver, which I also was the avionics mechanical lead on that project. Would you have liked to have had a virtual reality rig uh, during your time with MMS? We would have loved it. I think especially um, the spacecraft mechanical leads uh, and even the avionics mechanical engineers would have loved that experience. It's very difficult to develop a process and an assembly and to finalize your design and optimize your design when you don't know how the system is going to look ahead of time. And that's what VR essentially gave us the ability to do. When I was in there, there were some things like how we're going to install this avionics box through these struts. How are we going to uh, perform all this wiring across the system from the bottom deck to the top deck? How about the fuel systems? How are those going to get routed? That would have been huge to have that ahead of time. And I'm hoping that we implement that soon, maybe on Restore L, my current mission. What kind of applications can you see for virtual reality in your current projects or even future projects? Well, one current project that I'm working on is my main project, it's Restore L. It's through the Satellite Servicing Division. And what they're doing is, which is, I think is really great, they're going to take a, a spacecraft that is currently orbiting, perform a rendezvous and docking operation where they're going to target that spacecraft, grab onto it, and repair it. You know, there's nothing really wrong with the spacecraft. It may just need a little more fuel, or the computer may need to be replaced, and that's what they're going to do. Now, a lot of that operation is performed autonomously, especially the first part where they're going to kind of position the, the spacecraft that's coming on the target spacecraft. But the rest of it is done by operations on the ground. So if they could take advantage of VR real time when they're performing the operation, grab onto the spacecraft, you know, cut the thermal blanketing, cut the hose, install the hose and refuel it, I bet they would improve operations tremendously and wouldn't have to spend as much time on protocol, procedures, because they're doing it real time in VR.